Hey guys, Jagris here, and today I want to talk to you guys about Gwent, the Witcher card game, and more specifically, Gwent events, so Gwent tournaments, and what it's like to be a commentator, because for those of you who don't know, I am an official commentator for Gwent tournaments through the Gwent Masters series, and I commentate Gwent with Impetuous Panda, he's my casting buddy, uh, the other pair being McBeard and Mega Mogwai. So, you guys obviously, well some of you will have watched the events, you'll know what it's like from that perspective, but I'm trying to give you guys a little bit of a feel for what goes on behind the scenes and what is kind of involved in terms of being a caster. And it's a little bit open, open? It's a little bit different between Gwent Opens and Gwent Challengers, uh, which we'll go through as we go through this. So, the first thing we do is we travel. So I fly out of Norway to Poland, and typically we will fly on the Thursday, for casters, so you arrive on the Thursday and then you have Friday, Saturday, Sunday to work and then come back on the Monday. Now the players usually fly a little earlier, for example, uh, they come usually on the Wednesday and then on the Thursday that's when CDPR gets all the players together and they record their player profiles. So for example in the most recent Gwent Open that would be the bit where they went out on bikes and recorded all that kind of stuff, that happens on the Thursday usually. Also if you are flying from further away, for example from Canada, in the case of McBeard, they usually give you like a day to recover in terms of jet lag. So McBeard, he usually actually arrives on the Wednesday, whereas the rest of the casters show up on Thursday. It also depends a little bit on when, you know, flights are available and that sort of thing. But anyway, so we arrive and then that day is just kind of for relaxing, hanging out with the other casters, with the other players. We'll usually either go out to eat or order food in, play games. I always pack my Nintendo Switch, so I usually set that up in the hotel because I take the whole like dock, uh, or it might just be board games or card games um, down in the lobby, but you know, just socializing, hanging out, it's always really good fun. Um, and it's a great way to meet and get to know some of the new players, because there's always new faces, as well as just, you know, hang out with the old faces who you've, you've met before, because there's a lot of friendship involved. The next day we get up pretty early, so we're usually leaving around nine, which means you want to be up for breakfast and ready before them, but we leave um, and we go for an open, we go to the CD Projekt Red studio because at the studio, they have their own recording studio, you know, the booth that you see in all of the kind of streams uh, with the desk, with the players, that's all in kind of one little building. So, and connected to the main studio. There's obviously like the main studio where all the devs are working on like cyber cyberpunk and all that. It's got a canteen, it's got offices and the offices are really, really cool. They have all sorts of different memorabilia and stuff all over the walls. Like there's rooms with like light boxes, which have the leaders in it. There was one room that the entire wall is covered in like Funko Pop figures. I posted a picture of it on my Twitter, so follow me on Twitter, you'll have seen that. Um, lots of cool different things going on at the studio. The studio is just really, uh, like you can kind of feel the passion for their games. But we go there, uh, and the first thing we usually do is we have a session with the stylist. So we go and try on the clothes that she's brought for us. We don't pick our own clothes, we get clothes provided for us. Uh, if you don't like the clothes, I'm sure you could probably say and they would get changed. Uh, sometimes the guys have an issue with the size of the jackets. Uh, I think one time they put Bozier in an outfit that looked a little bit like pajamas. Uh, that was like obviously not something that he wore on stream. Um, so yeah, you, you go to the stylist. I'm typically not fussy. I'm kind of just like, you know, I'll wear whatever. If I look like a clown, so be it. Like, I'm not, I'm, it doesn't know. It doesn't really bother me. Um, like, I always end up wearing things that I really wouldn't wear in day-to-day -day life typically. Um, in terms of the style, but you know, it's the stylist that's our job, so I'm gonna defer to her. So we, we try on the outfits for day one and day two, so Saturday and Sunday. Um, you'll see how they look next to each other. So me and Panda as a pair, do our outfits clash? Do they work together? That sort of thing uh, for both days. And then usually we keep on one of the outfits and then record the draw show. Now before you record the draw show, we need to go for makeup. So <laughs> this is the thing, because it's all studio lighting, you go for makeup. As a girl, my makeup usually takes longer than the boys um, because she does like eyeshadow and all sorts of things and uh, generally just does my makeup. So I'm wearing makeup today. This is this is Jagger's, this is a Jagger's uh, exclusive makeup. But for, for events, I don't do my own makeup. Although uh, I believe Ash Lizzle did her own makeup for the challenger because she likes to do her own makeup. So she's, you know, asked, can I have my, can I do my own makeup? They said, yes, I'm quite happy to just let the professional put makeup on my face. It's, it's actually quite relaxing. Um, so I get makeup. Panda absolutely hates makeup. Mogwai's not particularly partial to the makeup either. I think Dane's a bit indifferent. Uh, Berger gets makeup, the players get makeup, everyone gets makeup. It's like, it's like the Oprah Winfrey of makeup. Like you get makeup, you get makeup, everyone gets makeup. So we get makeup. Uh, then we'll go through to the studio 
and we record the draw show. So if you've seen on YouTube, basically we pick the brackets. Uh, usually it's like Berger, then one of us, then Berger, then one of us for the opens. Whereas for Challenger, because there are hosts and analysts as well, they can kind of get involved. So we pick the names, we create the bracket, and that happens on the Thursday. Um, on top of that, if there's any extra stuff that needs recording, that's when that happens is on Thursday. So for example, before the finals, you saw like this uh, interview sequence where we talked about previous events that was all recorded on Thursday. Uh, and we also record these little like promo things for Twitter. You might have seen them as well, but like me and Panda will be talking about, you know, oh, tune in tomorrow for or tune in today for the Gwent Open and blah, 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 blah. I think at one point he was pointing a sword at me and one of them like, it's a little bit cringe, but we do that for opens. Uh, Challenger, on the other hand, you don't usually have that sort of thing. It's also, um, yeah, there's, there's usually less to do because it's all typically prepared beforehand, but there's always more traveling involved. So the most recent Challenger, the Skellige one, uh, instead of going to the studio, we went to this Viking village on the outskirts of Warsaw. Um, whereas when we went to Vilichka, the salt mine, that one we had to arrive the day before because we had to take a train to Krakow and then a bus to the event. And I think the one that was in the Nilfgaard Castle in Mojna Castle, that one they had to drive for like four hours on a bus. Um, so there's a little bit more travel involved. Uh, so yeah, then we do rehearsals. Um, so this is the time where you check if like your Twitter names and stuff are correct underneath and you spelled your name correctly. And we basically run through. So we get our earpieces or headsets, depending on whether it's Challenger, because Challenger, the production's done by ESL and open the production's done in-house by CD Projekt Red. So I have like an earpiece that you put in and then you put it behind your back. They clip a microphone to you. I have to be careful because I have long hair that the my hair doesn't like go against the microphone because it makes like a crackly noise. Um, so we do rehearsals. We have a run of the show, which is printed out and given us to us, given to us by uh, Vlad, who is their kind of esports director. So this will say like, you know, um, you know, greet. So we'll have like a greeting. Ja Jaggers and Panda greeting. Jaggers and Panda um, talk about the Twitter poll. Jaggers and Panda talk about decks, and it'll, it's kind of broken down. Game one, game two, game three, game four. This video goes here. This is the point where you talk about the notice board. This is where you promote the notice board. This is where we talk about the prize pool. And we kind of rehearse through um, a lot of that, just seeing what it will look like when it's on the screen so we know what to expect. Um, and so there's hopefully no hiccups in terms of the, the ordering and the production. So we go through those kind of things um, just to kind of get a feel for it. And if there's analysts and hosts, obviously our job is a little bit less because a lot of the times it's like we finish casting, we throw to the hosts. We don't have to do any analytical stuff. The analysts at the last challenger, for example, talked about the decks, so we don't have to uh, do that seg segment. But otherwise, we do that segment, and you'll notice over the course of events that the segments have been evolving and improving. So now we show the decks on screen before the matches, so we can talk a little bit about the, ma the decks and the kind of strategies that players are are utilizing. So that's a new feature. Um, and yeah, so we do all the rehearsals, and then. After that, there's like lunch at some point, and also we'll find time. This is all kind of done over the course of Friday and then also Saturday morning. We'll find time to sit down and look at the decks and talk about the matchups. So me and Panda will have our deck list because we get given lists, and we'll mark down, you know, these are the interesting cards. These are maybe the potential plays that you could see um, that you want to talk about. I have a little notebook. I'll show you guys here. It says Jagoras on the front. Uh, and in this, this is where I write my uh, rather scribbly notes. So this one is pretty interesting here, the Dagon versus Arrakos. This is a Tailbot versus Adzikov matchup. So Adzikov had Dagon and Tailbot had Arrakis, and I've written uh, Force Pass with Spy, Succubus, AR. So this is actually something that we saw them do is, as Dagon you play your Frightener and it forces your opponent to pass because they don't want to go cards down, uh, but then you play Succubus into Adrenaline Rush, and by doing that you then take the Frightener back to you, and there's nothing they can really do about it, so you have carryover. And it's actually a play that we saw Azakov make, so we make notes basically about the sorts of plays and the sorts of cards that are likely to happen, um, basically just preempting the match a little bit, because we can we can obviously figure out the matchups. So we do all of our deck prep, and then that's more or less it for Friday. Uh, Saturday morning, again, we go back to the studio, um, we go through anything that we've missed in terms of deck prep, sometimes you have rehearsals on the Saturday as well, uh, or if you're at a challenger event, then you go back to ESL and uh, back to wherever and you know ESL We have to be there in case they need us. So usually for a challenger we're there pretty early 
because ESL might need us for some reason, whether it's like framing or whatever on camera, but we're there and there's a lot of hanging around. Whereas for opens, I think CDP are a little bit more confident. So usually we don't have to show up till about 12, uh, where the event starts at four. So yeah, we show up, uh, you get changed into whatever outfit you're meant to wear at some point. It doesn't usually happen like very early. I normally am getting ready just before the stream starts, for example, because I'm not on until the second uh, set of games. Uh, you get makeup again. <laughs> it's like a, a common feature. And then, yeah, that's, that's more or less where it goes until the broadcast. And uh, the annoying thing actually is dinner is always served around 6 p.m., which is exactly more or less when me and Panda are on camera. So we usually finish about half seven, eight, and then we have to like reheat whatever was served for dinner in the microwave. It's usually pretty grim. Um, so yeah, we commentate Saturday. We do two games. Uh, Sunday is a little bit easier for us because we only have the one game. We only have the uh, second semifinal. And basically between Saturday and Sunday, on Sunday morning, again, we'll do our matchups. So we'll look at the, the semifinal matchup because obviously we don't know that beforehand. We'll go through the different uh, matchups that there are, the different cards, which deck is favored, those kind of things. So we talk about all that and just kind of get that prepped with our notes. We also, during these times, we speak to the players. So we ask them a little bit about, you know, their ban strategy or their deck strategies or why they've included certain cards in certain decks just to understand kind of where they are at with um, how they feel, how they feel also about their matchups. You know, do they feel confident? Do they feel nervous? Do they, who do they think is going to win? We, we, we speak to the players a hell of a lot and kind of get a feel for their strategy and how they prepared and stuff so that we can then feed that into the broadcast and make the broadcast better. The broadcast itself, uh, I felt like I always feel really nervous before but as it goes on, I feel like I just kind of relax a little bit more. But just before we go on camera, I'm always just kind of get that butterflies in my stomach feeling. Um, I do feel like I'm getting better as a caster. I think this is my third event casting now. And everyone has, well, not everyone, you know, not everyone's going to like you. But a lot of people have been saying, like, you know, you seem more relaxed. You seem more at ease. You're having more fun. I really enjoy your cast. So it does get better with time. And I think for me, the difficulty is to remember that Miguel and Mogwai have been doing this for like two years. Whereas Panda and I have been a casting duo for three events. So, you know, we're not going to be at that level straight away. But I do think with every cast, we're improving. We have a good dynamic. And for the most part, I think viewers enjoy it. So, yeah, that is kind of a flavor of what happens at events. Uh, if you have any questions, do let me know in the comments below. And I will fill you in in terms of, you know, just anything about Gwent Open, about Gwent Challenger, about what's involved. Let me know in the, in the comments and I'll try and answer them all. I'm probably also going to have a video going through how to get into casting for those of you guys who are interested in the future. Uh, so that's something I could potentially do. If you're interested, let me know. And if you found this you know, fun, then maybe leave a like. You can always subscribe to the channel for more Grunt content. Obviously, that's going to be ramped up with Homecoming. Uh, I'm on Twitter at Jagaris. You can see the Funko Pop picture from CDPR on my Twitter. And on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash Jagaris. Thank you guys for watching. Have an awesome day. Sorry if I was a bit like long-winded, but there was a lot to talk about. And hopefully I'll catch you in the next video.